Yeah, Who's chopping so, all the onions in here, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, a lot of these have brought out just amazing stories behind many of these players, and probably all of them have it. I mean, we don't have time to fill them and show a story for every single player in TI5, but all of them also talk about their team in general. And, and this one particularly, I mean, March says it, right? For any country, not just Korea, that has required military service, when you go in, I mean, in, in any industry, if you go away for two years, coming back and seeing that you're in your prime is a very tough thing to do. Keen's here going for another shot. And, I mean, he's already made it to TI, but to go further would be quite the jump and the confidence boost that he can continue, as he mentioned at the very end there. Who was it that also went into military service? I'm thinking of HYHY. Is that correct, or am I mixing it up with something else? Because I seem to remember there was an, a, another major SEA player that had uh, forced military service, whatever mm -hmm. you call it. I mean, I know they and, talked uh, about March, how he will be yeah, going. Will be March, going. Will be right. going. But it's, it's something that goes back a bit further, maybe a few years. I can't remember if it was HYHY or not. That sounds maybe I'm right wrong, to me. But, uh, he never really made the comeback if if that was after he quit. Like I honestly right. can't remember. Uh, I don't know how much he's been trying. I think he's been saying that he's interested in making a comeback. Of course, one of the another star player from SEA, very memorable, especially from his Dota One days and TI One, where he finished mm -hmm. third with Scythe. So it is it is really unfortunate for these players that they have to do it. Uh, I think maybe in some ways though, uh, a player like Heen, I, I'm not sure what the military service is like. In, mm -hmm. in South Korea, but uh, it, it's also possible that it can be a great learning experience where you can translate some of it into your Dota play, like when it comes to training regime, right. mentality, how to pump up yourself for to get the job done with the team and stuff. Like maybe yeah. that makes him a really good captain. His I time mean, in yeah, when you listen to various countries, not just South Korea, again, I, it, obviously, like you said, it depends on which division you're in, et cetera, going into that military service. But sometimes you come out with the advantage of having that discipline, right? And then you're older, you're a little bit more mature in that sense, and as you said, maybe you can act as a better captain for that team. Hot Six not doing so well record-wise yet, but they still have that chance, and at the very least, if they can end up in the top half of the lower bracket, they get to choose their opponent, maybe they can go forward there. And as Ben was mentioning earlier, maybe avoid the chance of Phoenix <laughs> picking their sister team here, Hot Six, as we go forward into the bracket stage. But that, uh, So Hot Six games will be coming up uh, shortly on our streams uh, across the board, and MVP Hot Six, two matches left again. It's going to be Newbie and Empire, and all three of those teams, actually, still a lot to prove. Uh, so as you can see, on stream two uh, and three, well, they won't be playing simultaneously, but they will be going forward. Hot Six will play one and then the other going forward. Now, coming back to the top half of Group B, C Deck versus EG. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is an exciting matchup. I mean, we saw the LGD Secret match yesterday, and now here we are with C-Deck versus EG, but again, no one expected to be like, alright, the Titan matchup of Group B is going to be C-Deck <laughs> and EG, right? Everyone thought EG was going to be in there, but c Deck surprising. How well prepared do you think EG is for this? I, I was going to just say something to go on that note, too, because, <laughs> and it could be all a front, but whenever they like to interview, like, their, their captain PPD and stuff. They always talk about like, oh, I don't really watch much of the Chinese teams and how they play. You know, we're we're just gonna bring our style. <laughs> now they could be lying and actually be researching and stuff. But C Deck is one of those teams that maybe they actually did look over. Being a wild card team, they're probably like, eh, we don't have to worry too much about them. But now they're the most hyped up match today, and yeah. uh, I really hope they didn't just look over them because they bring a very aggressive style that can throw EG off. A lot of teams have been citing his gyrocopter, aggressive gyrocopter, as mm -hmm. a very difficult hero player combination to play against, but they also play, he plays a lot of different heroes. I saw them like run Slardar and just absolutely destroy yesterday. So I think even if they just pull from this most recent pool of TI matches uh, from C deck, they're still not going to have a lot of information about them. And I, I, I can't expect to, for PPD to be fully prepared for this match. I think what he will do though is probably look to counter out aggressive in lane if he can do that. I think okay. he is he is really what like obviously everyone in the team is 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 doing a lot of work, but it just seems like aggressive what has really given them a lot of their wins is that he's really good at being an active carry. Uh in a sense it's it's similar to how we see for Secret Arteezy in the past he had a time when he farmed a lot. He's starting to get way more involved apart from when he's playing anti mage and he has to farm. Right. Uh, but sometimes when we see him on other carries, he does like to join fights earlier with his gyrocopter unless you know it's it's kind of the direction the game is going in that teams gather up and fight really early, so your carry needs to be able to join small skirmishes, ganks, and of course big team fights. And when it comes to aggressive, I think you you ban the gyrocopter. To me, that's okay. just a given. You ban the gyrocopter and you try to get the quap. And then if he goes for something like a slaughter or maybe his juggernaut that I don't know if they've used this tournament, maybe they've done it once. 
you try to maybe challenge him in the lane so that you you get to dictate the flow and the speed of the game. Okay. Now, whenever we talk about EG and their preparation, a lot of times it shows right away in their very first phase bans because they ban things that most other teams do not in the first phase. They let a lot of the high priority picks just stay open for both teams to take as a free for all. You mentioned Gyro definitely still ban out when it's up against C deck. Are there any other heroes you would like to see or you think that EG might want to just ban out in the first phase, mm. contrary to some of the other popular Lina ones? Lina and TA maybe for Shiki, especially when uh, Shiki's on Dire. I think the TA is a very very scary pick and. I know that Sumail doesn't really mind playing against a TA as a Storm Spirit, but just that whole sort of like Roshan control, just because if their carry is very, very aggressive and they can just secure map control in the first 10 minutes, you don't want them getting Roche, because then it's just going to mean another 10, 15 minutes of map control. And they're very good at setting that framework like right immediately after the lane start or when the lane start to rotate around a little bit. So I think um, they're going to play differently and ban differently on each side. Okay, Dakota, what about you? Do you think there's any other heroes that really come to mind when you think about C deck uh, that EG perhaps has prepared against them? The only thing I can think of is if EG feels C deck is, is worthy enough or if they value enough getting this win that maybe they entice or bait out C deck to pick something that they are comfortable with, and that's when they pull something out, similar to what they did against Fiji Gaming with the FY Bounty Hunter. Maybe they throw out there the, the Lesh, or they do give them the Gyro and risk taking that head on with something they might have been able to formulate you know out, outside of the ti so i'm not too sure to be honest it, it just comes down to how much eg have prepared for this kind of matchup because cdec once they build up that kind of momentum if they get something like a gyro they make that seven minute gank happen they end up being successful it's very hard to take that back away from them they will hold on to that advantage and not look to let go yeah now of course, EG, like you mentioned, I mean, a lot of times they, they are known this week in TI to be giving up a lot of these strong heroes and mm -hmm. just say, all right, we, well, we have a counter prepared or we want to try this maybe, uh, see how it pans out. But overall, it doesn't seem to have met the level of success they probably wanted it to, nor their fans. Do you think now, when it's now fighting for that first seed, do you think it's important for them to just say, all right, we'll just go with whatever is most stable? Maybe, just, maybe that's a switch that they need, because they're always too dynamic about their drafting. What do you guys think about that option? For EG? Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know how much they care about the current group standings, but mm -hmm. even if they win 2-0, they're not safe. Like, that is true. Thing. So the question is, do you, if you look at it as like a gamble and whether you want to quote-unquote burn a strat, I would, I would agree probably taking the stable approach here, because ultimately uh, whether or not you get first place is actually now out of your hands. Mm -hmm. You can win the 2-0 against CDEC, but if they win their other match 2-0, you're still second. Right. Um, now, if you win 2-0, you force them to win, because then a draw is not enough for them. So if right. they tie you, you still, mm -hmm. uh, you still win on uh, on head-to-head. -head. Uh, and, of course, in addition, you want to show that you're strong, right? So, of course, you want to go for the wins. I would say it's unlikely to see something very funky for EG here, because the, like the, the actual value of winning this series might not even... might be nothing, right? It could be. Uh, so I would agree. Stable here. As far as going further in the tournament, I think it's really good that they're being funky with their draft. It's the way they've... Historically, yeah. won a lot of tournaments by catching their opponents off guard. It's it's great to have aces up your sleeve, but the question is, how many aces do you have in the deck? You might want to save them for the main event. That's, that's a good way to put it. Uh, ben, on the flip side, EG does have a lot of niche picks. Do any of these directly go against what CDEC wants to play so that CDEC maybe has to ban these out on the other side? I'm not sure how effective Clinks will be. I think that's mm -hmm. one that they turn to a fair amount. Clinks is good at punishing greedy teams and I don't view C deck as a greedy team at all. I think they have, you know, the typical group around together and a very tightly knit uh, chemistry and teamwork and that's not very easily punishable by a clinks. Uh, so I think they should shy away from that. Uh, I did not like their triple invis strategy, the clinks bounty hunter plus green <laughs> protector. I also think that's a, probably a no go for them. Um, aside from that, I mean, it's, it's just a standard and of course, they need to be flexible as, as the draft goes on. It's a two-game series, so even if they drop one, they still get a good feel out for their opponent. And this is an opponent, again, they have not faced. And EG in Group B hasn't faced many of their opponents, and this is why they're not undefeated, I feel like. It's, they take time to adapt, to grow, to learn from their opponents and learn from their mistakes. And if they drop game one, I'm very confident in them in game number two. Uh, but it's just a matter of how generic of a strat. It's generally like a Naga plus... You know, something safe, maybe an anti mage to delay the game, maybe a dark seer for the combo plus holding the high ground. These are the stable strats that I'm looking for EG to run. Yeah, and now let's talk a little bit bigger picture going forward. As we wait for these teams to prepare for their match, 
Uh, Dakota, one thing we discussed briefly yesterday was, all right, so if you're in the top two of Group B, no matter which team comes out on top, would you? maybe it does depend, of course, which team you are, EG or C deck, but would you rather play against Complexity or C9, right? Because if you're EG, maybe you know C9 better, maybe, or at the same time, you just don't like that matchup because C9 games can go very long, and you're not sure how that always ends up. But Complexity, a little bit of a wild horse coming in. Yeah, that's actually hard to say, especially with Complexity being able to 2-0 C9 today. I don't know how much value a team like C-Deck or EG look into that. I want to say a team like EG might just go forward with complexity. Just maybe it's a team mm -hmm. they're probably used to scrimming against a bit. I don't know if they've given complexity the leisure of screaming with them a whole lot, but it's probably something they're going to be a lot more comfortable with going into, seeing what they expect. Complexity seem to be very good at adapting to what teams like EG and Secret pull out. So maybe EG feel like they're going to be one step ahead with that kind of game plan and would rather expect to see something that they'll be familiar with than the unexpected. Who would C-Deck rather pick, though? I don't know. Because they're, they're far more likely to get first, I feel like, just yeah. winning right. one, one of the four games. Um, or It's really difficult. I, I, think, I think one of Cloud9's strengths going into a tournament is how volatile they are. It can be great and it can be bad, uh, but it makes them a very unattractive pick. Uh, for this kind of situation where you could be like, is that good or bad for them in this situation? Maybe they would rather meet C-Deck, right? But C-Deck are like, we actually don't want to play Cloud9. And they end up against one of their, I don't know what the plural of Nemesis is. Nemesi? Do you say that? I don't know. Now you do. I actually uh, <laughs> Good question. You, you end up against EG. And generally, EG and Secret are the t two teams that Cloud9 tend to struggle the most against. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, if... I personally think, regardless of who gets first in Group B, they will not pick Cloud9 just because of that. Like it's too risky. They have like these explosive strats, like 16-0 yeah. IG, that kind of mm -hmm. speaks for itself. They're extremely good, and they can be like day and night. So you never know what you're going to get. Whereas with complexity, it feels a lot more stable. They have some different picks, but if you do your homework, you probably know the kind of strategy you're going against. All right. Yeah. I mean, just some interesting questions to think about. And I do believe there is still a possibility that EG doesn't finish if they lose. In this one, and some other results happen, they may not even end up in the top two. <laughs> and at this point, I'm just saying some other results happen. We'll, we'll look at the notebook of all answers here. I the, mean, <laughs> it's just for sure they could take number one if they obviously do right. beat C-Deck 2-0, um, and then C-Deck just at most tie with E-Home, mm -hmm. which I think we already discussed. I remember is reading there up there is a possibility for EG to gold week to get down the lower bracket. I don't know if that circumstance is... <laughs> to lower bracket? I don't no, there was, there was, starting today. Okay. Like it, Whoa. it might have already been thwarted with the results that have already happened. Oh, at it, the start, I do at believe. At the start, yeah. so, but that might have changed I think now. they can still go down below second seed. Yeah, though. and that's actually... Case, that's really important to keep in mind, because then all of a sudden there's a lot more in the line for this game than I said originally, where it's just like... You could beat C-Deck, but you might still not get first, so how much yeah. is really on the line? But if there's a risk of you dropping down to third, you would probably meet Secret in the first round, because exactly. LGD would not pick you. <laughs> so that I don't think is anyone a very <laughs> unattractive matchup, I think, for the yeah. first round, the winner bracket for EG. So with that in mind, I, I do believe a draw is enough to secure yes, them top two. Yes, I think you have 100%. to lose to C-Deck to have that so, risk happen. Yes, they would definitely be at least looking for the draw then. And that could mean that should they lose the first game, they might burn a strat on the second one because they're like, it's actually really important we don't meet secret round one of the winner's bracket. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the, other, on the other hand, they have really good experience, or they have a lot of experience playing against secret. I think they've lost the last few matchups, but they've beaten mm -hmm. them historically. Um, I think PBD is the kind of captain who goes into every matchup with confidence. He does his homework, and he's like, if, we, if, we need, if we're going to win the tournament, we need to beat every team, right? 